Now this car we're going to go pick up, we've been told, has no front drums on it. So there you see a set of front drums complete with bearings. And the other hardware is buried underneath there, so we're going to carry two. So we can take care of that because that's what the current owner has said. Likewise, you can see here we've got a couple of wheels that we can put on those drums. We have some old tires. These are takeoffs that couldn't be used anymore. They're worn out or way too old. Garden style gloves, they're leather. Alpine hammer, pry bar. This roll there in the center. Brand new roll of bailing wire. I've never moved a car in need of restoration without having bailing wire. A large ratchet with extension and three quarters inch socket. There's a half inch socket vertical there and that's a half inch and nine sixteenths special wrench. You also see a large crowbar, a breaker bar, and an appropriate socket for the nut that holds on those drums we've shown you. A two-ton jack, that's plenty for what we're gonna do. Can of WD-40. And let's show you what we have here. Yeah, whole bunch of bungees, etc. This is also where we'll put our controller for our winch. Coming along for the ride will be this inexpensive Taiwanese tool kit I bought when I was in Alaska. Purpose for that was I had to fix a car at 40 degrees below zero because I couldn't get it worked on it. It was the only car we had and it had a little coolant this leak. The brand new snatch block and chain, good for 5,000 pounds. We're going to use that when we're moving this car. Here's the brand new winch. And you see it's only 2,500 pounds. But the way we'll set up the snatch block, we'll have effectively 5,000 pounds at the far distance. And once it's on the trailer, it's going to roll super easy. This can be more than enough winch to do the job. Should be. Because the car does not have a drivetrain, which we're not even concerned about. These are the two extra long ramps that we had made for the trailer. It came with very short ramps. These work very well. Never been painted, so they're nice and rusty. Because they've been around probably 10-ish years now. And here you have the car trailer. Had this one probably, well, it's over 30 years. Refurbed it several times. Not too bad, though, considering most of the time it sits out in the weather. Just added a guide pulley. And here is where the winch, brand new winch, will mount. We will not leave it on the trailer normally because somebody will take it or and besides we'll be out in the weather too much. So here we are starting our road trip to go collect a unicorn. You ever been unicorn hunting before? Yeah, that's why they're extinct. I got them. <laughs> got them all, huh? Yeah. Well, we happen to have found one and we're leaving Prescott, Arizona headed to Albuquerque, New Mexico. What's so new about it? What's so new about New Mexico? Yeah. Well, it's because they already have old Mexico, and they call it Mexico, so they didn't want to call it Mexico 2.0. They called it New Mexico. I think they should call it old Mexico or regular Mexico. Or they could call it regular Mexico. <laughs> it's too bad we got a full tank. We could do a little bit of lengthy uh, mid-fuel mid or mid-flight fuel. I've never tried that, the truck. <laughs> We're not exactly going slow. Besides, we're not going to sit behind the truck and go pokey when we don't have to. But you see, trailers are treated probably the same way the delivery trucks are. You're a second class citizen. Oh, yeah. Even though you're going fast. Yeah. I've noticed that too. Even if people see you pulling a trailer and they're like, oh, I got Slow. It's like, I'm going faster than the cars in front of me right now. Getting some shots of Williams, Arizona here.
pushy one, huh? Oh, he's from Kansas. He's got a long way to go. Probably he's foreigners, bro. Are, are you a foreigner if you're not from my state? Does that make you a foreigner? That's me. And it's cigarette lighter thing. Well, here I'm getting some shots of San Francisco Peaks at Flagstaff in the distance. And those aren't in San Francisco, just so no, they're not in San Francisco. They're just called that. The tallest one is Humphreys. But we're traveling west to east, headed for our unicorn hunt somewhere east of Helpers Lay Off. Wow. And Holbrook became the same desolate place it's always been. So that's why Holbrook is like this. Yeah, it was going to be the next big thing, and then the crash of 2008 absolutely destroyed any idea of that happening. Wow. Yeah. So here we are at 5.40 in the afternoon, still heading east, going through Holbrook. You're not missing out. Holbrook is not the garden spot of Arizona. We stopped at the El Rancho Hotel for dinner. This happens to be a very famous hotel. It is the actual hotel that the Golden Age of Hollywood movie stars stayed in when they were filming the area with various westerns in the past. The rooms are named after various stars that stayed in. There's lots of memorabilia from the movies inside the hotel. And it has quite a good restaurant with the restaurant dishes also named after various movie stars from the Golden Age of Hollywood. I had the Rita Moreno. And Sebastian had the Ricardo Montalban, and I also had an adult beverage named after Spencer Tracy. The restaurant is not only good, it's reasonable. Our total bill, and you'll see the food coming up for one plate, was $46 plus tax. Boy, we spend that much at a fast food. Very good place, we highly recommend it. This is all music over because we cannot use music that is not licensed. We had to drop the sound in the background in both locations. We use truck stops when we're traveling and picking up cars. You're wearing lugs and gout. Here we come through Moriarty, New Mexico, on the way to Santa Rosa, Saturday morning. And you can see it got kind of cloudy above us. It was interesting in Albuquerque this morning, before the mountains, it was basically clear. Now it's very cloudy. These are actually quite low clouds. It's a nice dreary day for picking up a unicorn. Notice in New Mexico, we are here signs do exist. They're allowed to have tall signs. You can't do this in most Arizona. We have some fog developing. Visibility maybe about half of a mile right now. We've been as low as about a third. And we have missed. But we're still on our mission. A little rough to show you. There's a semi jackknife here. This road has gone very icy. We're about 30 miles from our destination. All right, here's the ambulance that turned in front of us. We didn't show you that. The road is very super icy right now. Well, here's another casualty of the ice on the road. If it's not visible to you, you might see some discoloration on this road. They're putting out sand now here in New Mexico. All the cars, and that's why I thought, well, I can bring parts and put the thing together if I have to a little bit. The only thing I ever saw was this little vertical video of it. Yeah, it's a little icy. It's not a big deal. We don't have to get it open. I was just looking down here at the data tag. I couldn't, couldn't read. See if I could read it. Part of it. Yeah, I can't read it at that distance. That's okay. Shoot, that thing was opening. Yeah, but it's, if you had the, kind of some of the water, it may just be frozen right now. 
All right. There's part of chrome in there. I don't know how much is it's missing. Yeah, there's a bunch of the side trim in it. Seats are in it. There's the... And yes, I do want the car, Ralph. <laughs> I really do. Go around the back here. Part of the, part of the headlight chrome in there. All right. As I mentioned to you, this is actually a 40. Yeah. One of the ways I know is that's a 40 license lamp handle right there. And this stripe right here tells you it's a 40. Oh, he got it open. Let's go over here and look. All right, current condition of the car. I just wanted to video some of it to take with us, besides the car, obviously. And that dash that I told you was laying in the seat. Yeah. Is this one here, and it's not. No, that's it's not the gram. It's not it. No. Yeah, these are really hard to read, even at close distance. I'll have to work on that a bit and read what it really was originally color-wise. I got, I got two of the numbers. The one's a body number, and the other one I think is the chassis number. Uh huh. But the, the serial number, I couldn't, couldn't read it. Looking around the inside. The serial number, of course, those are the two data tags. The one is the serial number, the other one is your color number. Okay. If the front fender was off, we can read the same chassis number is going to be on the front a frame member on the right side of the car. Well, part of that's, I don't know, I know the hood's loose and the grill's loose. Well, we're going to tie it on. We've, I've, we moved a few cars. We got bailing wire and everything to fasten her down with. Uh -huh. The only thing wrong with it, it had a whole third valve in the engine. Uh huh. Grandpa sold it. This one, that's another way we know it's a 40. That's a short hood ornament. They did that in 40. And then we had an older one. Really? I don't know what year it was, but it had wood spoke wheels on it. Okay, it yeah. Long. Yeah, well, even I've been saying that I'm going to have to get rid of some projects. Here we are on the driver's side of the car, looking down it. And for those who are seeing it, you can tell me in the comments if you know right now before I tell you what this is. But as I said, this is a 40. And it doesn't have a custom interior. Most of the dash is missing. That's okay. That's easy stuff. You know, look at your long rear window. How it retracts. Cool. cool. I think it's... What is it? 63 degrees. Water 63 degrees year round. Wow. They, they use it to, for certified scuba divers. Really? Yeah. yeah well, do they use the water then for the city then when it comes off? Yeah, it, well, it runs off into the creek. Uh-huh. And then that runs off into the river. Uh-huh. But they, I mean, they can use it. Huh. So it's... Yes, it's if they wanted to, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. anybody to fix it. I have one car for myself and my wife. So I went and bought this at like an O'Reilly and I fixed the car over a little over an hour being out in the 
40 below weather because I'd have to take my hands uncovered to do this. So I'd go out there, you work about 10 minutes, you go in and spend 10 minutes trying to warm your hands up again. So it took me about an hour to do it. So this is the rinky-dink tool set you take to do the things where you don't care if you lose the tools. <laughs> but it worked, but I was trying to do that way of repairing cars. I went and got myself a rubber hose that was bigger and two clamps and got it around there. And, well, it stayed fixed till I could get somebody to work on it indoors. Which is yeah. uh, no fun off top. We were doing uh, road call yeah. in my trucks in the winter and me and my dad would go out and he'd work for a little while and get in the pickup and get warm and I'd go and get out and work on it a little while and it'd switch off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty good. There, let's try that. Okay, it's on the trailer. Now,
picking up the prize and having had our ice storm this morning. <laughs>